What is going on guys? Popsy back with a video for you guys, bringing you my updated Mermail deck profile for the December 2020 format. Since we just got a ban list, typically I like to bring you guys these Mermail deck profiles whenever there's a pretty significant change in the Mermail deck. And with the ban list, obviously there's some significant changes. I do apologize for not uploading too much. Typically I just upload these Mermail videos whenever something changes with the deck. And it's been a while. If you guys don't know, I also have another channel that I mainly upload on that's not Yu-Gi-Oh related. Uh, that really takes most of my focus. This is more just because I love Yu-Gi-Oh and play it so much, I made a channel. So anyway, let's get into the deck profile. It's actually going to be very similar to how Mermail was before we played Link Cross before it came out, I should say. Um, if you guys want to see combos, I will show you, but just bear in mind that a lot of the combos are going to be very, very similar to what we had pre-Link Cross because Link Cross is banned, of course. So you've probably seen them on either Shire's channel or my channel or somewhere else in the Mermail YouTube community. So into the deck anyway, we have our starter cards, of course being Triple Neptibus, the best card in the deck, arguably. You're gonna wanna get to him in pretty much every single combo. Uh, and then we have Diva just to fish it out, as well as the Dragoons to help search out one of these two. The deck's very consistent in terms of, get, excuse me, the deck's very consistent in terms of getting to Prince. Um, the, where the deck really struggles though, is playing through hand traps that are not Nibiru. Uh, that's really where it struggles the most. Cause Nibiru, you can play around, thanks to a card I'll show in a second. But we have Evie Inventory just for another Atlantean name, to be honest, because there's times where if you open two Atlanteans and you only have three in the deck, let's say you only play three Dragoons, you open two, you can't resolve Prince. So I just want another name. This pops face up cards. Pseudo Extender, because you can normal summon it and get the additional normal summon of a Sea Serpent. Obviously, if this gets Veiled or Impermed, it's just as bad as, or worse actually, as um, your Diva getting Impermed, but it could be an Extender in a, in a pinch if you really, really need it. But just be careful. Uh, Triple Mintral, the card that makes the deck playable, I would say. This and Halky Fibrax, I would say are the biggest reason why the deck is still competitive in this format. Not tier one, not tier two, probably not even tier three. Definitely a decent road contender you can take to your remote duel locals or whatever and probably do fine. I did do some remote duels last week against more rogue decks to be fair. Um, and the deck was actually pretty fun because whenever I do these profiles, I like to at least test the deck a little bit. So yeah, Minstrel, look your opponent's hand, banish till the end phase, how you play around Nibiru. Also get information so you can go into a VFD play or go into a more negate heavy play or discard heavy play if you so desire depending on your extra deck. Uh, one Lapis Dragon as a Tuner Extender that you can just special when you search it. Really good for going to Hockey Fibrax. Uh, one Mulan, just <laughs> discarding two cards is good. Um, I, I really, really, really don't like thinking of this card as an Extender, although it technically is because you just special if you have exactly five Waters Engraved. The issue I have is I hate linking this card away. I don't want this card to ever leave the field if I play because then I skip my next battle phase. And, you know, if you put up four negates but have no battle phase in the next turn and you exhaust all your negates, you're just a sitting duck. So that's why I don't like clicking that away. If there's a way to get a rank eight out easily with that, I would do it, but I don't know of it yet. So yeah, then for the regular mermails, um, one Megalo, triple Teus, one Pike, and one Gund. So um, if you opened your goons plus Teus, it's still insane. It's always been insane ever since Teus came out in 2013, whatever. It's been an insane combo having those two cards. Gund can be an extender too if you get into Megalo. Um, there's some like weird lines of play you can do. Typically if you're going second, I should say, Gund is better because you can just go to Megalo so you can hack twice because the main reason Megalo is there is for going second because it just helps with DK really easily. And then Pike, I would say Pike is honestly better than Gund right now because there's a very well-known combo with Pike where you normal summon Pike, discard the Prince, bring back a Dragoons, go to Bahamut Shark, and make a totally awesome before your fifth summon, which is another layer of playing around Nibiru, which is really nice, or just hand traps in general. Uh, while gun, I feel like it's better going second. Honestly, you could arguably cut the gun. I just like having that plus one off Taeus, but then you can make the argument that it could brick because if you draw a gun, it doesn't really help you unless you have a mermail. Uh, and then we have what I think is the best extender, to be honest, in the deck. Uh, three Tiny Spirit, Shathana. It's a hard once per turn. You just want to see it. If you draw two, it kind of sucks, but you just special it for free. It's a level four, so it helps go into Ahashima plays, helps go into Bahamut Shark plays. Um, I think it's the best extender, but there's definitely arguments. Shark Stickers is pretty good too. I, I'm not playing it, but I did think about playing a couple of it. Um, the main issue I have with this is the hard ones per turn. Aqua Spirit's pretty cool as well. It's very similar. The only issue with Aqua Spirit is it can't be live in your first interaction. So in hands that are dead, or in hands that aren't very good, Aqua Spirit is worse, but in hands that aren't very good, Tenny Spirit is better than the Aqua Spirit, if, if that makes sense. Uh, which is why I really, really like this card. It's one of my favorite water extenders. Then other water extenders, we have um, two Arborea and also the one Rota, just to search it out. Um, this was better when we had Link Cross, obviously, because pretty much before, if you just got to Halky Fibrox, you could make a VFD. 
Now, with the way that I'm playing the deck, you can't. There are ways, if you play some more bricky cards like Coltwing and stuff, which I do want to look into, to pretty much just go into VFD just off of Halky Parox. At least I'm pretty sure there is. I don't know for certain now that I think about it. Um, but I just like this card as another extender. It's a tuner, so it helps if you have Prince. And let's say you go Prince and you have like nothing else and you don't want to go into... La let's say you hard draw Lapis Dragon, I should say. And you have this. You can go Prince into Link Rebo, Special This. There's your Halky Vibrax. Um, there's also situations where when you go into VFD, you need a level 3 tuner. So like, let's say for whatever reason, your Metal Marcher gets negated out of all things in your combo. They negate that and you have this in hand. You can just Special it and it'll help you out. Uh, and then Rota just fishes it out. That's why I'm playing it, just to thin the deck out. Uh, and then also Monster Reborn and One for One as other extenders, I guess you could say. Monster Reborn is more situational because you have something in Grave. One for One is very subtle to Ash and can also be a starter because it gets you to your Prince without normal summoning, which is pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, I think for hand traps, I'm playing five hand traps. The five you play is really up to you. Um, I do want to change this ratio a bit. I just don't have uh, other hand traps really. So uh, two Valor, one Ogre, two Ash. I, I think I'm going to cut the Ogre for a third Ash or if I had them, possibly just play three Imperms. It really depends. There are some really niche situations though where I actually have to Halky Firex summon an Effect Valor, which sounds weird, but it does come up. Um, there was a time where I had an extremely bricky hand and I Hockey Firebrack summoned Ghost Ogre and just had it sit there because you could pop it on your opponent's turn. At least I'm pretty sure you could do that, uh, which is kind of cool. I just don't think Ghost Ogre is that great this format. I think Ash is pretty good. Valor is really good. Uh, Imperm is really good. Um, Skullmeister and stuff like that is pretty cool as well. Uh, I just like having the, the different name, but I, I think it might be better just playing Imperms or a third Valor or a third Ash. Just five hand traps because in a 40 card deck, you have a 50% chance of opening them. That's, that's the math behind it. Um, and then for the Halky Firebrax targets, we have the one Fish Fork and the one Plague. I don't really like playing two different Halky Firebrax centered cards because, like, they're not Garnet Bricks, but they're cards you still don't want to draw. Uh, if you draw the Fish Fork Launcher, it could be like a pseudo extender in a way because you could, like, discard it from, like, Megalo or Minstrel, then it can come back and then you go to Halky Firebrax, which is kind of cool. Um, and then that's the situation where you might have to bring out Valor or Plague Spread or whatever. Um, and then Plague Spreader is needed to for VFD plays, basically, with Marcher. Um, that's why you play it. And then for the rest of the spells, one call by the game. I'm still playing one. I know a lot of people cut it, but like, it's just, it's just too good of a card. Like it's a Saki one of sure, but like, you know, not only does it help you with the hand traps even more because, you know, having more ways to play on hand traps besides Minstrel is great. It's also just a great like trap card. Like you just, like there's times where you could just set this and then on your opponent's turn, they've activated something. You're like, nope, call by the grave. And it just basically negate, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then for the rest of the card, the one upstart, um, 39 cards, I guess. You could play over 40, you could cut this card, whatever, because you have a decent amount of bricks between the Lapis Dragon, the two Halk targets, and other stuff you don't really want to draw. Um, but the deck, I feel, still think is decently consistent. And then I'm playing two Pot of Avarice. So um, I was on Moria Greed for a while. Uh, I still think Moria Greed's decent. I think Avarice is really cool. It's kind of a win more card. The reason why I'm playing Avarice, because I like the idea of doing my combo, putting up VFD, Pot of avarice everything back and then drawing an Ash. That's just amazing. Like, that's the best feeling. When you put a VFD and have an Ash in hand, you feel unstoppable because VFD is great uh, as well, sure. But um, VFD on its own is a lot easier to out than if you had other interruptions. You could also play Deep Sea Aria. I don't have Deep Sea Aria. I think Deep Sea Aria is, I think it's better now than it was before um, because, like, Teus plus any water plus Aria is still really, really good. The only issue I have with that play is. Getting to Teus is the hard part. Like, Teus is good with Dragoons, Diva, and Neptibus. So if you had Aria, it's another card that's good with uh, Teus. But the issue is you still have an issue of not being able to search Teus. So, yeah, I think that this or Aria are best. I, I would lean more towards Aria, but I'm saying that as somebody who hasn't tested Aria. So, take that with a grain of salt. Avarice is still great as well. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend playing three Aria, though, because of the hard ones per turn. It's up to you, though. Test it out. I do want to try it out, though. I just don't have any. Uh, and then on to the extra. I will show the side deck too because I actually need help with my side deck. So hopefully you guys can help me with it. Um, so yeah, for the extra deck though, uh, the one Halky Firebrax. We're still a Halky Firebrax turbo deck. You need it. Um, there's really not many plays you can do going first if you don't play Halky Firebrax. Like going second, you, you could do some stuff like Megalo and OTK and whatever, but you kind of need it. Um, the one Oridon, playing this again because Link Cross is man. You need, you can still make VFD, which is great. Um, the only issue with making VFD is that you can't make VFD off of Prince anymore with this variation. You need Prince plus an extender. So there's that. Uh, the one Marcher, you need it for VFD, of course, and VFD himself, the Crocosaur and the Trishula Fusion. Um, I was messing around and trying to play a variant that 
could also hand loop a little bit because I think hand loop is better now than it was in the previous couple formats. But um, there's just no room. Like I cut the Desert Locust, I, I couldn't find room for Omega. In theory, you could still do it and you could pretty consistently hand loop for it, which is kind of cool. Um, I also thought about playing Artifact Dagda in the side or main because you could go into Scythe, which is really cool. to have another extra deck lock, kind of like what you did with Buster, except that's banned now. Kind of neat, I don't know. Um, the Bahamut Shark, the Totally Awesome, and the Ahashima, they all kind of go together. Um, I, I, Ahashima is just one of my favorite cards, to be honest, to come out this year. I think it's such a really strong and interesting card that not many decks can take advantage of, and it's still pretty powerful because it allows you to get into Bahamut Shark. There are some really cool plays where you can put up uh, an Appaloosa, a Toad, and a Mulan, but you it's a really risky play because you can't go into Minstrel or play through hand traps in that play, and it needs Ahashima. Um, you don't need to play it. I just think it's just... It's such a, I just like the card, honestly. I think it's really strong. Um, and then the Link Rebo and the Al Mirage. Link Rebo is great because it has some really neat situations. Um, Al Mirage isn't needed as much because like I said before, going into Halky Firebrax alone isn't full combo anymore with Link Cross Band. So like this is really only good if you have Arborea in hand because if you normal, like in situations where you normal summon D.Va, it gets Ashed or Impermed or whatever. Then you go into Al Mirage and special summon Arborea, it's good. But that's like a really neat nice situation. And even in that situation, you still need another extender to full combo, whether it's the Tengi Spirit or Monster Reborn or whatever. So it's not 100% needed. Uh, it's just, yeah, I might cut it. We'll see. Because there's other cards I want to play in the extra deck, like more hand loop stuff and whatever. Uh, one Coral Anemone for the Pike play, basically. It's also just a good card generically. Um, really good in a lot of water decks to revive stuff. Locks you into waters, but whatever. Playing the Dragon as well because we get locked into waters. Um, you could play Savage if you want. The issue is one, you get locked into waters, and two, there's situations where you put this up before having a Link and Grave. So uh, yeah, that's why I played the Dragon. And also having a spell and trap negate is great because yeah, but Boral of Savage Dragon does also negate spell and traps, which is cool. But I feel like with this deck, is you'll notice, like I have a lot of like monster negates, monster interruptions, whatever but not that many spell and trap interruptions. So being able to put up Toad or put up a Dragite with the rest of your board is just really, really good. Uh, one Appaloosa, because you can, like you can go into it. It's one of my favorite cards, I love it. And then I'm playing one Boral Sword. I never typically play this card in Mermail. If you have access code, go ahead, play that. That card's great as well, I just don't have it. Um, Boral Load, even, they're starting for that. The reason why I'm playing this, because when I was playtesting against a friend, he was playing Rogue Dex here. He played Shadal, some sort of like Mill Stall deck, and Cubics, which weird decks, I know. But in pretty much every single duel, I'm like, wow, if I had Boral Sword, I would win right here. And I I just put it in the deck because it just came up way too much to not play. Um, it's not needed, sure, but um, I, I just really like the card. It's just that good. And then on to the side deck, we have uh, Triple Ghost Spell, one of my favorite hand traps, and I feel like it's pretty good this format because there's a lot of Grave-centric stuff. Um, Swollmeister might be better, Giddy Crow might be better. I, I see a lot of people playing this, and I just like this card more, so that's why I'm playing it. Um, only two Nibiru. I, I kind of want to fit in a third somehow, but I'm not really sure what I would do. Uh, then I'm playing the two Gamma Seal, the one Pankratops, maybe cut a Pankratops for it. I don't know, I just feel like Pankratops is too versatile, and uh, the Gamma Seals are mainly for like Dragoon and stuff, so that's why I play it. Um, and then I have Triple Dark Ruler because I don't have Droplets or Talents or anything like that, so I'm playing that. Uh, one Duster and Double Twin. So this is just for back row decks really. The issue with Twin though is I realize like there's not many situations where I want to have another discard, right? Because Mermail is a type of deck or Water and Journal type of deck where you really want to have cards in your hand because you need to discard a lot and stuff like that and you use stuff in your hand. Whereas with Twin, you have to discard. So if I had Lightning Storm, I'd just play Lightning Storm, basically is what I'm trying to say. Uh, and then one Duster because it's great. And then the one Order because there's some decks where you just play that and you literally win the duel because they can't play spell cards and their deck really needs spell cards. So yeah, Snacking one of sure, but still very very good card so that'll be it for the deck let me know what you think in the comments down below if you want to see more combos and stuff let me know in the comments but again all of the combos i'm going to show are combos like they're not going to be new combos i don't think any of them are new it's all combos that have been around for a while just maybe combos you haven't seen for a little while so yeah leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new let me know what you think in the comments down below help me with my side deck let me know what changes you would make and i'll see you all next time Bye bye